Yeah, this is usually a comic book channel, but uh, it's going to be on hiatus for a few days because I'm going to be doing some remodeling. Uh, you looked around this place with the bookshelves and my junk and all that stuff. Looks like a, I don't know, like a serial killer lives here or something. It's starting to creep me out. So basically, I'm going to be going through the shelves, boxing some stuff up. It's going to be like complete series and start boxing up the mini series in one box and complete, you know, stuff like that. And probably just leave out the stuff that's incomplete that I'm filling up. Uh, what's going on is that on a website called a uh, comic DB or something like that which stands for database off and on over the last couple months I've been like entering my books on there so I can just get online and not have to dig through this stuff see what I got and don't have and I got over halfway and I'm thinking there's probably like about 2,000 more books more or less that you know need to be put in there and I'll put me right about the 10,000 comics mark and I started looking through that stuff, and I'm like, this is garbage. So as I'm remodeling, I'm probably going to be pulling out some stuff and just make some lots up and stick them on eBay, get rid of them, probably start them out at like a dollar, 99 cents, or 99 cents or a dollar or something, I don't know. But it's time to get rid of some of this stuff. Um, so yeah, there's going to be some downsides, and I've always said I'm going to do a little of this and a little of that. My downsizing usually comes down to like maybe downsizing 40 or 50 books at a time and still have a ton. And a lot of stuff's not going to sell. There's no doubt about it in my mind. So, you know, we'll see what happens. So, I got off my butt, decided, you know, let's commit, let's do this, get on here. And then I was like, well, you know, what are you going to do a video about? You know, I've uh, got some stuff lined out for the, you know, first real story that broke Alan Moore in America there, the uh, anatomy of, uh, the anatomy lesson, uh, we're going way back 30 years to, uh, what was that, uh, Swamp Thing number 21, but, you know, that's one of those things where I'm going to take my time with, because there's a lot going on in that book, so I didn't want to rush it. I also wanted to get this started, too, so basically I wanted to, uh, talk about the crazy neighbor, okay, for, I got a lot of new subscribers, and, uh, there's guys that every now and then will ask me, when am I going to do an update on this guy? For you new guys, <clears throat> this crazy neighbor that I have, when I moved down here about a year and a half ago, give or take, came over here. He's got to be a man in his late 60s, early 70s, kind of tall, white hair. And he's originally from New York. I'm down here in Virginia and stuff like that. And he lives with his wife next door. And... First couple of days I was here, he came right on over, wanted to kind of introduce himself, so I'm thinking, you know, this would be neighborly. And we come in my house, and he's here about 20 minutes. He's 20 minutes. He's then nosy. He's wanting to check me out and all this stuff. You know, no no big deal. I'm pretty respectful, and, you know, uh, you know, I'm just kind of like, okay, I can handle this guy. And he went on and started talking about how he was connected, and he can put people under his uh, protection down here. And once somebody's protected, nobody messes with them, not the police or anybody, and stuff like that. He's that well connected. Then he went on to stories about in the late 60s how, you know, he would hang out in this bar, and he started working for the mafia, and he had to take out a few guys and all this stuff, and I'm just kind of nodding, and I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm half fascinated and half like, does this guy not hear himself? <clears throat> then he talks about his guns that he has, and he went on and on, said he's going to check me out and all this stuff, He's you know, and everything like that. He likes to know who's around so they're not trouble and I'm just, he's starting to lose me and then he did it. He started talking about his wife. And he said that he got his wife out of a bar back in 68 or something like that because she was all strung out and he got her and he was making such good money, you know, being a hitman or enforcer or whatever the hell he said that day that, you know, he was able to like get her off of everything she was strung out on. But he said that to this day, they got married in 1968 or something and to this day, he has never kissed her because he knows where that mouth has been. And I was just like, okay, you need to go. And I just got him out of here. No big deal. So I start seeing him in town here and there. Nobody's really talking to me in this town down here. And he's just real loud, real obnoxious. Goes up. No matter where he's at, he walks around like he owns the place. And he's just talking to over everybody. Just real obnoxious and stuff. And he informed me he was going to do a background check on me. Well, you know, crazy old man, and I don't think too much about it. I was just glad to get away from him. And then I got an email about three days later said somebody had done a background check on me. I'm like, no way. And in some of my videos and stuff, I don't know which ones, you know, I kind of tell other stories that happened. Um, stuff like he said he was always recording me, and 
anytime I'd have like uh, I did get company and stuff he'd be over here at his house and I'd walk my company out to their car so they could leave he'd be looking around his house you know kind of like this you know looking and looking and I'd start telling people you know watch this I'll start messing with him and stuff like that and I would like turn around and just look at him real quick and catch him and he'd be all animated and then he'd run behind his house then he'd start sneaking over again Looking like that. I mean, over here, you know, right next door. And then I'd do him again like that. He'd, you know, take off. Like, he'd have a big conniption fit and run off. And then he started getting worse and worse, okay? And what I started finding out is that my power went out one time. They messed up my account. I didn't have power for three days. I needed my phone charged. I needed to call the electric company, see what was going on. So I went over, he, you know, I went over there. I was going to ask him about to use electricity. And this is probably like the third week I was living here, you know. I get over there, and this is where it gets real nuts because he, now he lets me in, all right? And I'm like, I don't know about this. And when I come in on his living on his little coffee table, he's got like an old Russian AK, I don't know, 47 gun or something, you know, kind of like a military Uzi. He's got all these bullets around. He's got some pistols and stuff. And I'm like, oh man, this guy's got an arsenal. It's kind of nuts. And then he has this great big huge dog. He's having this huge dog, and he comes by and he's acting crazy with him man the dog was like a giant puppy ready to go out the back door and get in the backyard and he was like acting like he was holding it back off me and stuff like that you know like trying to intimidate me or something and i'm like ah, i'm going to charge my phone and get out of here so you know it was just all kinds of crazy stuff like that and finally it started getting bad because he was starting to spy on people as they come over here he would pop up over here just long enough to tell me you know this color car was at my house or he wanted me to report to him who came and visited me and stuff my, my visits are from people are few and far between down here i'm out in the middle of nowhere and you know I, and i was just like telling him to back off a little bit and stuff and i can go you know oh you know this guy just runs me over so i went over there one day to confront him on something because he's running his mouth over in town and you know i where i'm from it, it, you reach a point where you just confront him pretty or not and i don't care if he was an old man at this point so i go over there and some guy opens the door it turned out to be his brother i found out and i asked for him by name and it turns out that wasn't his name the guy was like there's nobody here who lives that just as rude and obnoxious as he is and i'm just like oh they got to be related so I didn't see him for a while, and it turns out he gave me and everybody a fake name out in town. And he's always running around talking about how dumb the cops were here and stuff like that. And then last week, after living here, you know that you're starting to be accepted anywhere you go when two things happen. The women start laughing at you, old, young, whatever. When the women start looking at you and laughing at you, and when people come out to tell you the gossip, okay? So I get off work. Uh, oh, the reason me and this guy had our little last showdown is I had a married couple come over that were friends of mine. Very nice. We had a great day. And we dropped her off. And then he and I came back over here and watched some movies or something like that. You know, just kind of hung out, looked at some comics and stuff. He came up to me like as soon as that guy left and wanted to know what we did with the girl. He was accusing us of uh, doing something with the guy's wife, like we killed her or something. And then he came over a few days later, and I've been getting some weird looks in town, which may or may not be related and stuff. And then he kind of was like turned to that dirty old man again, and he's like, huh, huh, I bet you two and him, and I bet they're swingers. And he started insinuating some stuff, and I just told him right there. I was like, he just told it up. And I had a few words with him right there. So all of a sudden, you know, he's getting a kick out of this, and he sees me out in town again. I'm getting dinner again at the same place. And he comes over there, and I don't know what he's doing. It's like he, he just, like, was about to try to intimidate me again. And said, I'll let you know I'm recording everything you do over there. He caught me on the wrong day. And I said, I said, get back here. I said, let me tell you something. I said, I got a camera, and uh, I think I'll just turn mine right back on you if you don't back off. And he was just all freaked out and stuff. So I started seeing him, like, spying through his window, you know, just, like, right there in the window. So I took this computer and I went out there and I set it in my car and I turned it around at his house and I just stood there like this. And he starts getting all conniption again and he tries to get out of the way and you see him trying to like pull down the shade and stuff and I didn't see him for months, months. I think he was trying to tell people that his wife was sick and he was taking care of her and for all I know somebody might want to go there and check see if she's still alive or tied to a bed or something, I don't know. So over here where I get these dinners and stuff, I've heard he's been popping back up and then people in town know that he's my neighbor because, you know, he went and ran his mouth a little bit. 
and I haven't seen this guy in months, ain't heard anything, didn't really have any stories. So all of a sudden, uh, I'm, I'm outside of the place, order my food, and I step outside, and I'm sitting on a bench waiting on him to fix my food, and one of the guys comes down, he's like, oh, what you see it go down? He's been going into this restaurant, and the cooks and the ladies that are there and stuff like that are all women. Now, you gotta understand, this is like a little, little like, uh, hot, I don't know, they sell hot dogs and stuff. You walk in, there's tables, they got the little cash register right there, and you can see right there where they're washing dishes over here, where they're cooking, and they got one room in the back where they can go outside and throw stuff out, and that's it, small place. You see everything that's going on. And he'd been coming in acting like he was, you know, like he owned the place. And he's acting like the owner didn't really own it because he owns the restaurant, but he rents the building, I think. So, you know, this guy, this old man over here, thought that he could come in here and bully the people and just tell on them. You know, I'll tell this guy that owns the building. And he starts picking on a woman in there, the tiniest woman in there who I've never heard a squeak out of, real tiny and all this stuff, and he berates her until she's in tears. Well, it turns out the guy that owns it, that's his ex-wife, and she works for him, and they still have a pretty good relationship, and in his mind, that's, you know, that was my wife, right? So this, so he, he, the old man was coming in there, like, I guess this was going on for two weeks. He knew when the guy wasn't there, the owner wasn't there, and that's the only time he'd pop up. Well, I came in there uh, the other day, knew very little about what was going on, and he's walking around with a pistol on his hip, and he's just walking around like, yeah, you just tell so and so the owner you know oh i'm here whatever he wants to talk just run his mouth in the whole place and when i came in he runs up gets real loud shakes my hand because i ain't seeing you kind of like insinuating i've been dodging him i just looked at him and i'm like yeah I just was like you need to go on i'm eating i'm getting my food and i turn around they're all just kind of looking at me like yeah he's nuts and everybody in there's laughing at him well the next day i get off work and i go back over there and i'm going to get a hot dog platter to come in this is like friday at 1.30 on Friday, the guy finally came in there, caught the guy, and the owner looked at the old man and said something like, you just need to go on, you're not allowed here, you're banned. And that old man looked at him and said, boy, I will drop you quicker than when your mommy gave birth to you and you hit the floor or something like that. So he was like, call the cops, get your ass out of here, you know, and telling them off and stuff. There's a bit more to this story, but I don't remember, it was like hilarious. People were laughing at the old man, laughing. So he's like, well, I'm just going to call so and so who owns the building, and uh, they ended up they ended up calling him too to let him know what was going on. He's like, if he's out, he's out, and I'll 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 deck him. And what I got told is some people of authority in town told the owner, you're a bigger man than me. Why don't you just do us all a favor, take him in the back, and just beat the hell out of him? So this guy's got everybody hating him and stuff, and I ain't seen hiding her hair with him since then. Walking around with a gun, you know, picking on the girls. Uh, doing background checks on me, recording stuff and everything like that. And now he's holed up back over here in his house and stuff. And I haven't seen him a lot. I haven't seen that car move. I ain't seen him look out the windows. And there's an awful smell coming from the uh, house, kind of like a urine smell, you know. So, well, anyway, that's the old man story. That's the crazy neighbor update and stuff. So I'm going to get back over here and get this started. So, you know, carry on.